Hello everyone, this is Mark Sabatella from Mastering MuseScore. I would like to welcome you to the MuseScore Cafe. So according to my, uh, my um, phone here, it is April 13th, uh, 2022. And uh, this is my regular weekly series where we talk about some aspect of making music with MuseScore and um, usually pick some topic to talk about and go on about that topic and take some questions along the way. Uh, the, the whole series is brought to you as always by the Mastery Muse or School. I've posted the link at the top of the chat and that's where you can enroll in my Mastery Muse Score complete online course and learn everything there is to know about Muse Score pretty much, as well as learn about music theory and counterpoint and all these other uh, things that I, uh, that I teach there. And you can join the, uh, the community as well well, lots to lots to explore there. So today's topic is going to be about making things smaller. That is that is my goal because it's a it's a recurring topic that comes up um, uh, where you have a score and you want to fit it on fewer pages or otherwise get things to be more condensed. And that's what we're going to look at today. So thanks everyone checking in here. I always like to see where people are. Uh, watching from and um yeah that's always uh, an interesting thing to me especially as i consider times as i like think about planning any new events um thinking about what times tend to work best and i know we have a lot of people in the united states we also have a lot of people in europe and occasionally we have someone coming in from australia or new zealand or asia where it's like the uh, really early in the morning like it is uh it is for rod right now so i'm uh, always uh always uh, happy to see when you're able to to join us here um so things are going well for me. It's a blustery day for us uh, here in Colorado, but uh, other than that, uh, things are fine. So um, yeah, I wanna talk about this idea of making things uh, smaller and not just making them smaller, but making them fit in particular ways because it's it's uh, something that a lot of people uh, struggle with and it's not like there's one answer here. So it's like a number of different techniques that you want to know about in order to make things happen. So for instance, let's look at my MuseScore Cafe theme, shall we? Um, the, the music here, um, I have it, let me uh, shrink it down a little bit more so we can really see what's going on here. So one thing that I've done, and um, I think I'm going to close the inspector for now, uh, and then we'll we'll get that back later. Let me close the pay, play panel and close the inspector. So I have set up this score to be horizontal, to be landscape format. And that's not something that is necessarily recommended for most uh, most types of scores, but it is actually quite common for ensembles of approximately this size. Uh, when you have what I have here, what I have uh, three horns, guitar, piano, bass, drums, so essentially it's um, eight, uh, eight staves per system that actually fits quite well on landscape paper at a pretty readable size. I mean, if I go to format page settings here and we take a look at the size, this is the default page size in MuseScore, 1.75 millimeters. I'm not the default page size, sorry, the default staff size. That's the default staff space. So as I mentioned, <coughs> in my newsletter and again if you're not already subscribed to the newsletter click the link at the top and then the newsletter link from there you can get subscribed i mentioned in the newsletter uh this week that that default there 1.75 if you multiply that by four that's the size of a staff space and there's four staff spaces per staff normally so this yields 1.75 times four, which is seven millimeters, which is a typical staff size. It's it's big for scores, actually. Um, scores are often printed with a smaller staff size than that. But this allows eight staves to fit quite comfortably. Uh, and laying it out landscape means you can maybe fit one more measure than if you did it portrait style. And this format is very common for scores of anywhere from say eight to 
15 to maybe 20 instruments. It's very common for like big band scores. Uh, jazz big band scores are very often laid out in this uh, kind of portrait orientation here. And by the way, I'm going to um, just scroll up and see if there's any like burning questions about anything here or I don't see anyone saying that my sound's not working or anything like that, but uh, okay, good. Um, so by laying it out landscape, what it does is it lets you, again, have a little more horizontal room to work with. Uh, and the thing is, if I did this portrait, let me, let me switch it to portrait mode so you can see what that looks like. If I switch it to portrait here, and this is all page settings, that was format page settings. If I switch it to a portrait orientation, um, actually, before I do that, let's look at this right now. It is seven pages long, right? There's page seven. So right now it fits nicely in seven pages. If I switch it to portrait orientation, so I go to format, page settings, portrait, you'll see it is, now it's nine pages long. So that wasn't a win in itself uh, because the problem is at this size, I can't fit to systems on a page anyhow. So all it really means is that some pages are going to have one fewer measure, right? Originally, I was able to fit three measures on the first page. I just did undo. I was able to fit three measures on that first page. Um, but in portrait orientation, I could only fit two. And, you know, you, that happens on maybe about a quarter of my pages where it's the difference between one extra measure fitting or not. So in this case, going to a portrait orientation didn't save me anything. And that's because of the number of instruments or the number of staves and the staff size. However, if I do want to actually do this in portrait orientation, because you will find any number of people talking about classical scores in which <clears throat> they'll say, oh, don't use portrait, don't use landscape orientation. It's not the norm. Well, it is in the jazz world for big band scores. It is in in genres of music that typically use systems of about this size. It ends up being quite common. Um, but yeah, in some genres, it's not common. So if I did want to do this portrait, if I wanted to save space, then the first thing I need to do is figure out, well, how small do I need to make these staves so I can fit two systems on the page and then do I want can I live with that so I'm going to start by doing that just to get a, a, a rough guess by going to format page settings and I'm going to start reducing this staff space and as I mentioned it's really tricky to as I mentioned in the newsletter that is it's really tricky tricky to type into this like I, I can't just type I can't select these three digits and type uh six Oh, six, five. It, it, once I type the six, I lose the selection. It's sort of awkward, but yeah, you can see 1.6 didn't buy me, didn't buy me anything. 1.5. Ooh, 1.5, uh, didn't allow multiple systems to fit on a page. You can kind of tell that from the preview here, but what it did do was it allowed one extra measure to fit on a page somewhere. And so it got down to eight pages. But I want to see how far do I have to go down to actually get two systems on a page. Um, I'm going to use the down arrow here. Now, to that 1.3 did the job. Notice instantly it got two systems per page for pages uh, two and three. It didn't manage to on page one because page one has that title frame and it takes up a little extra space. But if I go down just a little bit more, say 1.2, ha, there we got it. How about 1.25? Yeah, 1.25. And since I like ni nice round numbers, I'm going to stop there for now. So simply by going to a, paid, a, a staff size of 1.25 millimeters, I was able to fit two systems on a page. That then in turn allowed me to uh, to get way down, right? From, the, from seven pages that I started with in portrait to nine pages, which is where I was. I mean, nine, seven, seven pages, what it was landscape, nine pages is what it was portrait, but now it's down to only three pages. So simply by reducing the staff size, I made that work. Now, the question is, can you live with a staff size of 1.25 millimeters? Well, let's do the math on this. 1.25 millimeters times four is 
five millimeters, and hence why I like my round numbers. I was able to do that in my head. Five millimeters for a staff size is, and I'm going to go grab my copy of uh, Behind Bars, which I was looking at a minute ago or a day ago. Give me one second, and I will be right back. Yeah, I had that out yesterday and forgot to put it back where it normally belongs. So, um, uh, one, so five millimeters as a staff size is, um, you know, that's smaller than the seven that we started with, but that seven millimeters is for individual musicians needing to read their parts. And the question is, well, is that really so important for a score? Because yes, the conductor, if there is one, needs to read the score, but do they need to read every note while they're performing it? No, they just need an overview big picture. So it's actually quite common for scores to have much smaller staff sizes than uh, parts do. And so I'm just looking to see uh, where uh, Elaine Gould, the author of, um, author of uh, behind bars, what her recommendations are for staff size in the actual score. And, um, you know, I don't see a specific heading in the chapter, but I do see page layout 520. So I'm just going to take a quick look, see if she gives a size. I don't see a size in millimeters given here. Maybe someone else who has a copy of this can can float around, you know, can can search around a little bit more to see if you see um, any, oh, staff sizes. An orchestral score uses the same staff size for all performers, uh, page 597. References page 597. But so the thing is that for parts, staff size, yeah, it's also talking about cues, so that's not a, that useful. All right, so I I say that that's fine. I, I think that five millimeter staff for the score itself is probably fine. I will give you another reference because this is a good reference to know about. Um, if I go to, um, uh, let's see. What is it called? It's um, the uh, MOLA. MOLA is the Major Orchestra Librarians Association. Actually, they've sort of rebranded what it stands for, but uh, it still is Major Orchestra Librarians Association, right? Um, so these guidelines here are ones that are pretty commonly uh, quoted uh, when people are looking for, you know, advice on sizes of things, but not just sizes. There's all, there's other things in these guidelines. So this is like a good companion to behind bars. So I'm going to post, well, I can't post that link. I, I got to post the right. guidelines for music preparation. Copy link address. I'm going to post this in here. MOLA guidelines. Ah. Uh, Here we go. <clears throat> so um, the uh, MOLA guidelines are, are quite useful for a lot of things. They give you a lot of good suggestions. And this is professional orchestra librarians who help put this together. So this is definitely stuff to pay attention to if you're trying to write for an orchestra. And um, there's all sorts of things here. Ah, here we go. Full score. Minimum legible staff size for scores is four millimeters. Well, that is what my gut was going to tell you anyhow. A staff size of one millimeter, I mean, a staff space size of one millimeter is my bottom line. I do not like to go below one millimeter per staff space, which yields four millimeter uh uh staff. So think of one millimeter as your don't go smaller than that staff size. And the thing is, again, the conductor isn't really having to read this uh, in real time. And I can zoom in and work with the score, even though the staff is quite small. Now, I see a question about um, staff dividers. And yes, yeah, so here's a thing to know. MuseScore can add these automatically. Like right now, it's a little awkward to tell. I mean, you can 
tell by looking at the initial system bar line that here's the start of the second system because that's where the first system bar line ended. But they make these like slash dividers. And to get those in here, we're going to go to Format, Style, System, and we're going to enable them. And you can enable them on either the left or the right side or both. And I'll just put them on the left. <clears throat> and there they are. And they get inserted there automatically. So inserting those dividers there helps when, when you do have multiple systems per page. It helps especially if you do, I also saw a comment about a condensed score. And that word can mean different things. Um, uh, Jim, you're probably meaning it the same way that I would mean it, which is a condensed score is one that, so some people use that to mean like, oh, we're going to put the trumpet and alto on a single staff because they're similar enough. We can share some space that way. Well, that requires work, right? But because uh, you have to actually copy and paste and decide how you want that to work in terms of multiple voices, etc. But what's also quite common is just to hide empty staves. So if there's a staff if there's a part that's not playing for a whole page to just omit that staff. And if you don't already know about that, that's format, style, and then you go to uh, score, and right here, hide empty staves. Now, I don't think it's going to do anything because none of these instruments stop playing for a while. But if, for instance, uh, I eliminated this little hit um, there at the end of the vamp, if I delete that measure, watch what happens. When I delete that measure, let me let me do that zoomed in a little more. This page here, you see it's got trumpet, alto, trombone, guitar, piano, bass, drums. Um, but the horns are only playing for that one measure. If I, I this time I'm not even going to delete it. I'm just going to hit enter here to put a page break. I mean, put a line break right uh, after this measure so that these two measures will be by themselves on that system. And when I do that, notice the trumpet and trombone and alto went away because they're empty. So that allowed uh, this system to get smaller. And luckily, there was room for that measure on the next system. So that's something you can totally do is use hide empty staves to save space in your score. And many of you are probably already doing that. But that's absolutely a thing that you would want to do if you have any concerns with how many systems you can fit per page. Like it might be the case that if I use this enough in a longer score, I could fit three or four systems on a page because there might be a place where it goes down to just uh, rhythm section for a whole, like maybe it's just piano solo for like a minute. In that case, you could probably fit four systems on a page because um, none of the instruments are playing. So definitely using that hide empty staves is an important uh, consideration, a, an important way to give you more systems per page. In this case, it didn't really buy me anything because I already had only two systems per page. Hiding the empty staves didn't change that. It's still two systems on that page. So I'm going to undo that change there. Um, but I want to talk about how I could possibly make the staff size a little bigger and still manage to fit two systems on this page. So look at this page here. Um, if I look at this page, there is an, it's fitting um, two systems on it, but you can tell like the trumpet and alto are able to be pretty close together on the second system, but they're further apart on the first system. Why is that? Well, it's because of this dy these dynamic markings. If I push these dynamic markings up a little bit, and I will just use, uh, actually, I think I have to, because dynamic markings work special because they're kind of tied to hairpins. Um, let me reset that and redo this. I'm going to move the hairpin, and the dynamics will move with it. So I'm going to move the hairpin up, and the dynamics moved only partially. Um, that's okay. I can do that manually. Come on. Click. Click you. You're clicked. And the problem is it is trying to align these things, so I might have to turn off automatic placement for... Uh, actually, I don't want to turn it off. So, okay, I'm... 
there are certain frustrations with trying to get your dynamics and your hairpins all uh, correctly aligned where you want them. So sometimes there is a little trial and error here, but I am gonna go ahead and move that up and I'm gonna see if I can move this dynamic marking up here. And I might have to make this minimum distance smaller. All right, I am failing big time. So I do have to do this the manual way. So I'm gonna reset all of those things. And it, it is it is nice when I get to like see some things that don't work as, as, as nicely as I would want. But if I disable automatic placement for all three of these elements, disable auto place, you notice now that it allowed the staves to come uh, closer together, but it, it did that at the expense of some collision. So I'm gonna have to fix things manually, but now I can do things like move this dynamic up in there and move this hairpin up here and move this dynamic up there. So this kind of fine tuning of your positioning of things to allow you to reclaim some space, it might turn out that that is then just enough to allow you to use a bigger staff size. Like look over here, that was a particularly gnarly example because the, the hairpin also and the slur, but I managed to get it done, right? Well, look how much extra space is in between the saxophone and the trombone staff. And it's for similar reasons. It's this accidental and that uh, hairpin there. So if I move this hairpin up, it will also reclaim some space. And if I, uh, you know, I can do the same with, um, as far as disabling automatic placement on some of these things to reclaim even more space and allow some collisions if I want. So all of these things allow me to get more space the space between the guitar and the piano is because of this dynamic and that chord symbol. What if I just move that dynamic to the left? There we go. By moving that dynamic to the left, it allowed some space to be reclaimed. So one of the things that I do when I'm trying to reclaim space is I will first get a staff space size that gets me close. It, it fits what I think I want on the system you know, how many systems I want on a page. But then if I'm like, yeah, but this is smaller than I want, then I'll start playing these games with the uh, position of these dynamic markings so that I can reclaim a little space. And then I'll see if I can crank the size up a little bit more. So like if I go to format page settings now, maybe I'll find that at 1.3, I can still fit two systems on that first page. Remember, I couldn't before at 1.3, but because I've adjusted by dynamics, now I can. So MuseScore is going to try to allocate extra space to avoid collisions, but it does it in a, I won't say a dumb way, but it does it in a way that will waste space. And so if you wanna conserve space, you might have to use your own judgment in moving things side to side, moving some things up a little higher than they normally, a little closer to the staff than they normally would want to go, just to allow two staves to come closer together. So that's um, kind of a set of optimizations that uh, I often perform uh, when I'm trying to uh, fit some music. So those are all some things that I can show you just looking at this score. And I feel like now, uh, if I look over it, yeah, this looks pretty good. And I feel like I now have a three page score. I don't like what I actually did there, to be honest. Um, I, I, I was happy before I made those adjustments. So I'm gonna go back <laughs> to keep undoing until I'm, come on, I did a whole lot of adjustments of those, okay, there we go, there we go. Now I have it redone to the point, oh, now let me redo adding this, the dividers. I think this is actually pretty good as is. At most, I would see, like I didn't like what I had to do with all the dynamics there, but I do acknowledge that this is a ton of extra space here. So here's another thing, MuseScore, look at what's happening with this flat sign and that hairpin. MuseScore is trying to make sure they don't collide, but it's being 
overly generous. And the, and the reason for this is the, the collision avoidance algorithm doesn't understand the shape of a hairpin. It draws a rectangle around that hairpin and then tries to make sure that this flat spine doesn't touch that rectangle. But as you can see, that means there's all this extra wasted space. So I can actually close up that wasted space without causing any collisions or anything, you know, or at least in principle I could. And the way I'm going to do that is by adding a spacer. So I'm going to go to the breaks and spacers palette and use this guy here, the fixed spacer. And if I add a fixed spacer to that measure, then I can just drag that thing until the dynamic is a little like just barely not touching it and all that good and as you all know i for some reason just get really uh silly about liking nice round numbers so instead of 9.22 i'm going to see if nine nope nine's not enough but 9.5 is good how about 9.25 there we go i'll call it 9.25 i don't know that's just a failing of mine i like round numbers actually it's not just a quirk there's value to the round numbers because it allows for consistency. I can remember that that was the amount of space I added here. And if I have another system with a similar problem, I, I know that 9.25 is a good value that will give it a consistent look to this. And, um, and yeah, there's also something to be said for, like, if you look at how beams work out, MuseScore is actually tries to follow standard rules where end of this beam here is either right on a line or it's a quarter of the way in between the lines or it's halfway or three quarters between. Those are the rules. Uh, it's always supposed to be set up that way where these things line up either with lines or at quarter increments between them. That algorithm has been improved greatly for MuseScore 4, but even in MuseScore 3, we at least try to do some of those sorts of things. So there is actually some real like tradition in engraving of actually doing things on boundaries of quarter staff spaces and other things, half staff spaces, like rests are positioned by half staff space. So the, it's not just this weird personal quirk of mine that I like round numbers, but it actually does, for at least some things, uh, do good things, things that we want it to do. So, you know, I could do things like move this MF just a little higher and move this mute a little higher. Oh, actually, this mute is, I was thinking this mute was on the trombone, but it's not. It's on the guitar staff, so that doesn't actually help me at all. Um, but moving the chord symbol a little lower and the mute a little lower would allow those staves to come in a little closer, right? So those sorts of adjustments are totally worth doing. And realistically, that's where a lot of, um, now I'm undoing some of my changes here again because uh, I want to get back to that place where I just was. There we go. Okay. Um, 9.25. Um, so those were some changes that I made here to just get more on the page just that way. Now, I'm going to take a look at a score that was submitted recently. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is take a quick look at a score to Brahms uh, First Symphony, since we're talking about that a little bit in this new venture that I've started. By the way, if you didn't hear about that, I'm starting the the groundwork for a new a new program I'm calling the Alt DMA, where DMA is a Doctor of Musical Arts. Alt DMA is an alternative to a Doctor of Music Arts. No, I'm not going to be giving out any actual doctoral degrees, but it's um, kind of an online program that I'm looking at putting together that's somewhat more rigorous than just my online courses that are now that are really designed to get you to a particular place. And it's going to be patterned after the Alt MBA program that started by Seth Godin, um, which is like a just a month long workshop. Mine will be a different form, I'm sure. But in any case, it's this idea I have, you'll be hearing more about it in the coming months because it's going to take a long time to put together. But as part of it, as kind of a launch for it, I'm having the people who are uh, in the All Access membership, um, we uh, are working on uh, analysis of this Brahms symphony here. And so when I look at this Brahms symphony here, uh, 
I might want to look at the same sorts of issues for this. So I look at this and it's long, right? It's a, it's like a 15 minute uh, movement here. And right now he's not using the hide empty staves uh, feature. And I can tell that because, well, here's a whole bunch of empty staves that are not hidden. So simply by turning that on, I'm going to save some room because I think that's going to allow me to fit two pages on a single, I mean, two systems on a single page, at least sometimes, but not very often. As I scroll through here, I don't see a whole lot of empty systems. So it's not going to save a ton. There might be some pages where I'm able to get two systems on a page, but I'll take it. I will totally take it. So right now it is a hundred pages long. That is a long score. Let me just turn on hide empty staves. So start format style. I'm on the score tab, hide empty staves. Boom. How much did it save me? It's now down to only 99 pages. Yeah, I kind of thought so. <laughs> I, I really didn't see any other place. But are there other pages where it's close? Yeah, there's some other pages where look, look, this system and this system, if I had a smaller staff size, I could totally imagine these fitting on a single page, right? Um, is there anywhere else? Well, yeah, some of these systems here, if I get my staff size small enough, I can almost already fit these two systems on a page. So I want to check and see what my staff size is. So I'll go to format page settings. And his staff setting, his his uh, staff space is the old MuseScore default of 1.764. This was the default up until maybe a year or two ago. And this is one that um, it was, I just uh, posted something in the community about this. This staff size is based on uh, old, you know, pre-metric uh, numbers where you had points and picas, right? A point is 1 72nd of an inch. And a staff, a typical staff size was 20 points, 20 70 seconds of an inch. So if 20 70 seconds of an inch is your staff size, divide that by four, five 70 seconds is your staff space size. And that's what this number is. This is five 70 seconds of an inch. So this was back in the day, a common staff size. But even if I just reduced it down to 1.75, that might save some space already. That might allow somewhere else something to fit. Uh, looks like maybe not. Um, but what if I go down to 1.25, that five millimeter staff size? Oh, I bet this did, I bet this did something. Look at that. We went down from 99 pages to just 62 pages. So that bought quite a lot. Um, and then I could say, well, what if I go down all the way to just, uh, one millimeter, which is the four, the four, um, four millimeter staff size. If I go down there, I am down to only 35 pages. Heck yeah, I am doing it. I am totally doing it. So I'm down to only 35 pages now. When I do this, uh, you have a lot of wasted space, right, on the bottom of some pages. And I'll talk about that in a second, but I do want to see, because there's been some other, some other comments uh, here, just the height of the slurs. Oh, yeah, Dean, that was absolutely right. So in the, that little, the stuff I was doing with the, the cafe here, you know, if I wanted to try to save a little space between these two, I could flatten this, this slur here. Flatten it or just move it down a little bit. Just move it a little closer to the notes and that saves a little space, right? So there's there's some, stay, some space saved right there as well. So the problem with making the small staff size in, um, in a score like this is between that and hiding empty staves, now we still have some situations where we almost but can't, we almost but can't quite fit two systems on a page and there's a lot of wasted space as a result. So, here's where we start to need to get a little more creative. Um, what I'm going to do is, the first thing I wanna do is, because I saw that his staff space size was set to 
that tells me that he started this on an, in an older version of MuseScore, perhaps with a template. Maybe he did it in a new version, but the template was from an older version. I want to turn on an option that only became available in 3.6 and later, and that's format style page enable vertical justification of saves. Um, this is on by default for new scores, and sometimes people don't like what it does by default and just turn it off rather than understanding what it's doing and how to work with it. But here's a case where we definitely want it. So let me show you what it does. It is not going to change anything about how many measures fit on a system or how many systems fit on a page. Well, it might accidentally change that a little bit. But mostly what it's going to do is it's going to allow these under full pages like this to fill up. It's going to automatically stretch out those staves. And if it doesn't, then there's parameters I can tweak to make that happen. So let me turn it on and boom, it actually did more than that. It did allow multiple systems to fit. So let me talk about why that happened. This is an important thing to realize here. Let's look at this uh, score for a second. In this score here, you'll see there's places like between the contrabassoon and the horn where there's plenty of space, right? Plenty of space between those. And then there's maybe other places where you really couldn't reasonably close bus stuff up more. Like between the bass clarinet and the bassoon, we don't have a lot of room to work with. Otherwise, this A2 is going to hit the, the fortissimo there, right? So there's not a lot of room to close up the space between the bass clarinet and the bassoon. Um, yet there's all this extra space between the contrabassoon and the horn that we don't need. That's because the defaults in MuseScore used to be very conservative. They wanted, they would say, well, let's just make sure there's a reasonable amount of space between every staff, probably more than you need most of the time. And then, yes, if we need more, it will create more. So like if this measure here, if I transpose it down an octave or two, notice that added more space, right? It as I transposed these notes down an octave, it added more space between the bass clarinet and bassoon staff. So we start off with a pretty conservative amount of space, like more than we probably think is necessary because we wanted it to be balanced overall, but we weren't smart about being able to add space even where it wasn't needed. We only added space where it was absolutely needed. So I'm gonna undo those changes Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna come back to that style dialog. And when I turn on, if with, with vertical justification disabled, notice he has the staff space set to nine spaces. That's more than the default. The default is actually only six and a half. The reason he cranked it up to nine was so that all the pages would fill out. If we had gone back to the original staff space size, you would have seen that all those pages had empty space on the bottom. So he used this setting here, artificially adding extra staff space to accomplish something of what the vertical justification would have done. And in fact, I'm going to undo all the changes and we're going to see how effective it was. So let's look at this. So by adding all that extra space, he has filled up the pages pretty well. If you look at it, it's not very even. Uh, the bottom margins are pretty ragged. There's more bottom margin here than there is here, which is ironic because this one actually has stuff hanging below the staff. It should have been the other way around. Uh, so that approach of just increasing the minimum staff distance, it was the best that you could do in prior to MuseScore 3.6, unless you wanted to add a whole bunch of staff spacers and figure stuff out manually. But all these ragged bottom margins here, by, by making that setting there, yeah, he did an okay job. I'm going to redo all my stuff here. That did an okay job of making the pages more or less balanced. But if I do now enable vertical justification, now it's able to go with a crazy small minimum staff distance of 3.5, not the 6.5 that was the default, not the nine that he created, but 3.5 as a minimum staff distance because we're never gonna see that 
other than the most crowded pages. MuseScore is now going to automatically spread things to fill the page. So we're going to be able to fit more stuff on a page and we're going to get nice even margins as a result in principle. And if we don't, then we'll look at why. So I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, yeah, there's some places where he's fit, where it's now able to fit more systems and the margins are relatively even, but they're not as even as I expect them to be still. And I think maybe it's because of this dynamic markings, but I want to check by tweaking a couple other settings. This was one that got uh, I learned about um, doing one of these cafes a while ago. And I do see another comment here. Um, oh, I'll turn slurs. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, the thing is that when MuseScore goes to spread these staves out to fill the page, it, uh, it, it only does it up to a certain limit, and I might need to up that limit. That is this setting here, the page fill distance. If I up that limit, it might fill those pages more. It looks like it's not, so it looks like that wasn't the problem. Um, so... Um, yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest, why these bottom margins are still a little ragged, why this bottom system here is a little lower than this one. It could be just because of that dynamic. Let me try moving that dynamic. Well, it doesn't seem to be because of that dynamic, because just moving that dynamic didn't change anything. Oh, I would have to move that dynamic and this fortissimo over here. Yeah, so that's the problem. It's not trying to, so that the algorithm isn't quite smart enough to align the bottom of the staff. It aligns the bottom of the music. So it's including those dynamic markings. So let me reset those and just live with it. So, um, yeah, so the bottom isn't completely even, but in any case, it, it was able then to, to use a much lower minimum staff distance. And so there's now many pages that are able to fit two systems. Most of them, in fact, fit two systems. Some of them are quite crowded in doing it. Some of them are less crowded in doing it. Like, can you tell that there's more systems here? Like this here looks like all the instruments are playing or virtually all of them. But on here, there's many fewer instruments playing. Well, I don't know about many fewer, but flute, oboe, B flat, clarinet, bassoon. Okay, contra bassoon is gone here. Also, it looks like the trumpets are gone here. So two staves are missing there, but it was able to spread things out nicely to fill the page. So that page justification is normally turned on by default. And sometimes you'll see advice to turn it off because it can create like a weird looking last page. But I guarantee you there are better answers than turning that off other than for lead sheets uh, or parts, individual parts of a score, um, turning it off is fine. Because what that, that setting about paid, about justification of staves is about automatically changing the space between staves, not between systems. So if you're dealing with a lead sheet or if you're dealing with just an instrumental part, there's only one staff. And so that setting doesn't have any reason to be there. So disabling it is, is fine in those cases. But for scores, you should have it enabled. But when you look at this last system here, yeah, this last system looks a little funny because it's trying to stretch it out so much. So here is where I could go back to that format style and reset this max fill distance back to its default. And that didn't really actually change much, if anything. What I can do here, there's two things I would do. One is say, OK, it's OK to have a bunch of extra space at the end of the last system and say that's just OK. In which case, if I want that, I'm going to add a spacer. I'm going to add this guy here, staff spacer down. And I'm just going to move it down until it hits the margin. And then that'll start pushing the, uh, the system. The, you know, start squeezing the system closer together. So if I want there to be a bunch of empty space at the bottom of that system, that's how I could do it by using a spacer. But that's not really what I want. What I would really rather have is less crowded music. I'd rather have the music fill up that last page better. Now, there's 35 pages in here. What I would really do is start thinking about where I could put page breaks in that would be smarter, that would allow that last page to be fuller. But I'm not gonna do that for now. I'm just going to make some quick little 
like here I see, wow, look at that. There's a whole bunch of cleft changes there. That feels like something important happened here, Meno Allegro. Let's put a system break right before it, shall we? And uh, then I'm just looking for a couple places where I can put in some system breaks. I'll just put one in right here. Ah, uh, that's still not enough. Put one in here. Whatever. Uh, I just wanted to show you that by adding more system breaks, I'm all, I'm now forcing that last page to have two systems on it. Realistically, now these pages are much less dense than everything else. You really need to start from the beginning and work forwards, or start from the end and work backwards more conservatively and figure things out. There's a whole process in figuring out how to optimize those breaks. And realistically, figuring out where the page breaks go is super important important for the parts because the violin player they're both their hands are busy they can't be turning pages while they're playing so you have to optimize where you put your page turns for the violin parts or any of the wind instrument any of the instrument parts really you have to optimize the page turns to not be while people are playing to do it while they're resting um, if at all possible but for the conductor score that's just not so important so um if you alter the slurs, um, it's no longer the default. So yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I. I knew I wanted to come back to that, but Maureen, I'm not totally sure what you're what you're saying. But when I altered the slur here, all I did was moved it closer. If I reset it, I'm still keeping the default shape of it. I'm just moving it closer. So I just use down arrow to move it. Oh, actually, when I moved down arrow, it flattened it because I selected. Uh, that handle. I didn't mean that. I didn't want to flatten it. I wanted to select this handle and move it down, which moves it, um, just moves it closer. So I'm still letting MuseScore shape the slur for me because if I start using these other handles to shape the slur, you can totally do that. You can eh, shape this slur however you want. Um, there's a good chance that you, it's going to look terrible. I can't draw a nice circle, and I can't shape a nice slur. So I usually let MuseScore shape the things for me, um, but I do move them closer when I think I can. The slur algorithm has indeed been improved for MuseScore 4. So for MuseScore 4, um, the slurs will just generally attach better. It will do a better job of avoiding some things that it doesn't currently avoid. Ties won't collide with accidentals that was actually the starting point for that because right now you can get situation where ties collide with accidentals and it uh doesn't look very good um like if i had um actually not just accidentals let me, let me change this f to a g here oh that one worked let's change this c to an f there we go there's a mess right this looks pretty ugly um so muse score four that won't look so ugly so let me do undo all those changes and uh, maybe undo some of my slur changes. Let me just reset that slur. I don't know why I want to reset that thing, just in case I accidentally save it. I don't want to have a bunch of weird manual adjustments in it. So um, anyhow, these things that I'm doing, this is the stuff. This is what it's all about. Notice the thing that I have not done that some of you may be aware of is playing with stretch. I rarely go there because the default uh, spacing in MuseScore is, um, well, it is what it is, but if you try to override it and try to compress things much, it generally doesn't look that good. There can be situations where you can do that and get something out of it. But for my money, you can get like you're never going to adjust stretch enough to get down from 100 pages to uh, 32 pages or 35 pages, whatever I have. Right. That's not going to happen from stretch. But I do want to show you what that's about in the Brahms here. It may well be the case. L let's take a look. I'm going to go to measure properties here and Look at this setting here that says layout stretch. I'm now going to start using these arrows to move from measure to measure to see if it looks like he's played with stretch. It looks like he hasn't played with stretch. So let me tell you what stretch. Actually, I'm just going to select all and go to tool, go to format, stretch, reset. Yeah, it looks like he never played with it at all. So um, I'm going to remove those breaks because they really didn't do me any favors all either. Um, 
So select all breaks, remove. Okay. Um, what stretch does is it compresses certain measures. Uh, so or reducing stretch does. Like already I look at it and say this, I don't want this stuff compressed anymore. It's already pretty tight. But if I wanted to fit one more, if I thought there was some value in squeezing one more measure onto a page like right here, if I thought I really want to get another measure onto that system, I could select those measures and then use the stretch command, which is left curly brace to compress them. And sometimes it compresses them by 10%. And maybe that's enough to, to get it to fit on the system, or maybe not. So you might have to hit it two or three times. And then maybe it might say, no, it's just not going to fit. Even if you compress every measure to its absolute minimum, it's just not going to fit. There's no getting around rules of physics here. So uh, I've got those now fitting on a system. And that might allow me to get the music smaller. And so, yes, there's places where you can do that, but I don't recommend doing it that way. Here's what I recommend. I recommend, I'm going to reset that stretch. Now I'm going to go to format style measure, mm, not measure numbers, but measure. And right here, it looks like he's already reduced the spacing from its default of 1.2 down to 1.14. Actually, that used to be the default years ago, many years ago. But this, this was a score. Maybe he started it many years ago. I don't really know. Or maybe he just likes round numbers, too, because that's like the square root of two, right? But if I reduce that all the way down to its minimum of one, this is going to be as compressed as things can be. Although he's also changed the minimum note distance here. This, uh, if I set that, its minimum is 0.2. So this is now saying notes can be only two, only 0.2 staff spaces apart. So I now am letting this be as compressed as it possibly can score wide. How many pages is it down to now? It is now down to only 22 pages. Wow. Wow. So we've really, really got it uh, nicely compressed here. And the, the question is, is that too much? And if so, um, if that is too much, we could, uh, you know, turn that value up. I could select some measures and like, look at this measure. Look how crowded that measure is. That's too much. I think that's, we went too far. I went too far. So I'm going to go back to format style and I'm going to see if changing the minimum note distance to 1.25, well, that changed a lot, and now I don't even have that measure in focus anymore. Um, so I'm gonna go back to set that at, at its default, and I'm gonna just change this to 1.1 and set that to 1.25, which are both nice round numbers, and, and see if that um, gets rid of any weirdnesses like that. You know, I would scan the score and look for things that look too tight. Uh, but on a 100-page score, or, you know, it's not 100 pages anymore, um, oh, look what happened. Now it was able to fit the first system onto that first page. And that wasn't what he intended. He actually intended this to be a title page. So I'm just going to put a page break there. Control, enter. Come on. Select frame. Control, enter. No? That should have put a that should have put a page break there. All right, how about if I add it via that way? Huh. All right, I am not sure what's going on. Why th there's something funny going on that I'm not understanding involving breaks? Because putting a page break on that frame. Okay, something now I can't even say. Well, I guess that line break was that was already the last. But I should have been able to put a page break on that frame. Control, enter. Wow, this time it worked. Okay. Sometimes my computer, when I switch to a window, I need to switch back and come back to it before it gives it focus. So it's possible that was going on. But in any case, uh, yeah, this is now pretty well compressed. And, um, you know, I'm back to having my last page uh look a little weird. So I could go back to add the spacer or add some some uh, some more line breaks to fill out that last page more. You know, I'd have to think a little bit more about exactly how I want to do it. 
or if I go back to format style, maybe think about whether the point two is really what I want. You know, I, 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 you can just play with all these things, or you can just go to all the way down like I did and just live with that one crowded measure and say, you know what, that's good enough. That one crowded measure isn't the end of the world. Point two, one. <clears throat> So th anyhow, these are the kinds of things that you do if you're trying to make your score smaller to fit on fewer pages. I do want to show a similar thing now. I'm going to go ahead and generate, pa generate parts for this thing. If I generate parts, all parts, and now I'll look at, say, the oboe part. The oboe part is now... Mm, five page, five pages long. I look at this and I want to decide, am I ever going to be able to get it smaller? Well, yeah, certainly I can because I don't need this giant title page business here. So I can shrink all this down and get rid of some of that crap there. Or I could just do the same thing I did before, make it a separate title page. And ah, now this is better because I don't care about the title page. I don't mind if there's a separate title page. But look at this. I've got four pages and one extra system there. So I want to get that down to just four pages. Well, if I go back to format style, you'll see it's already got my super compressed look there. And the thing is, I'm probably not going to be able to get it. Like it's probably already unreadable as it is. Plus it's already got terrible page turns. So in order to get this smaller, first I would, I would need to decide is, is that even feasible or am I better off just filling this out? to be for full pages by adding breaks. Chances are that's better. But what I would do here is since it's already as compressed as it possibly can be, if I decide I really do want it to four pages, I will go to format, page settings, and notice it's back to the default staff space here. I should only have to reduce that a little bit to get that last system onto uh, that fourth page there. So that's all I would do there. Oh, uh, looks like I'm uh, uh, my my picture is frozen. Sorry about that, but um, uh, I think I'm about done here. Anyhow, look at that, I'm frozen. Hey, me. Um, oh well, sorry about that. Um, but that's uh, that's life. In any case, uh, I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this kind of tour of all the different things that I might do. Um, oh, last five or 10 minutes. Sorry about that. Yeah. And it's like a weird face for me, but oh, well, that happens. Um, uh, if I give, I don't even know. I don't, I don't, I've never fiddled. Yeah. That didn't change anything. And it didn't change anything either. Yeah. Whatever. It's just the way it is. So, um, as it is, I'm going to call it done and you just get to look at my frozen face for a little bit because uh, I'm going to get on with other things now. But I've showed you a whole lot of stuff about compressing things and getting stuff to fit better. So I hope you've enjoyed these things. There's, there's other things that are done that are possible also. And as I said, it's often a, a combination of different things you want to play with, but it's not necessarily the go-to things that a lot of people assume are the things that you will want to go to. Often there's a lot of maybe different things that you'll want to play with. So hopefully you've gotten to see some of those different things and some of the different ways you can play around with these things. And um, it looks like I am now also, my screen share is no longer working correctly either. And that's just the way it is. But uh, that's okay. You don't need to be seeing the screen share either here. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the session. And um, I'll be back next week with uh, the score of the week in which I'll talk about something involving one particular score and what's involved. If anyone has any specific ideas, a score of your own that you want help with or a, a score that you want to see how to enter, you know, a score like an actual published score that, that you want to reproduce, go ahead and post to the conversation space in the community and by all means come join us again for the music masterclass tomorrow. We're going to look at some music 
Several people have written some music kind of uh, in honor of uh, the, the victims and all the, the people who have been hit by what's going on in Ukraine. So we're going to look at some tributes to uh, the, the Ukrainians and some of the music that's been written there and talk about whatever comes up uh, musically as a result of looking at that music. So I hope you'll join us for the music masterclass tomorrow. So uh, if either tomorrow or next week, I hope to see you soon. Have a great week.